So today I thought we would jump back to basics a little bit and focus on some 3JS fundamentals. A while back, I put out a community poll and I asked you guys what type of 3JS tutorials you'd like to see me cover. And user interaction came out on top. So that's object selection. So if the user were to click on an object in the scene, we wanna be able to perform some action when that happens. So I put together a quick demo, a little quick project, We'll run through that. I'll show you exactly how to do that, how you can pick an object and then perform some action based on that. Here's our little demo. All I have is this floor laid out and then I have some cubes stacked on one side and some cylinders stacked next to those. Now I can click on any of these objects. So I'll click on the cylinder here and we can see both in the console that cylinder A was selected and we changed the color of the cylinder. So I can click on any of these, cylinder B selected, cylinder C, and it'll set this to a random color. And I can pick any object in the scene, it'll print the name of that object to the console and change its color. So pretty simple demo, but if you can get this down, you can do a lot more with that. You can trigger any type of action, you can make DOM updates, you can update your UI. We'll cover the very basics and then you can kind of take it and run with it for your project. So at the very end of the tutorial, I'll also show you how you can selectively choose which objects are interacted. Maybe I only want these cylinders to be selectable and I don't want anything to happen if the user were to click on the boxes or click on the floor. So I'll show you a few different ways you can do that. All right, so we're starting with our scene preset up here. I'm not gonna go through all the setup logic because I figure you already have a scene that you're trying to work with. Um, just very quickly run through it here. I'm uh, setting up a renderer, then we're creating the scene, adding a light to the scene, setting up the camera, our animation loop here, and then just a big section where I'm setting up the geometry, the meshes in my scene. So I'm creating a floor, um, some boxes, some cylinders. And one thing to note here is that I've separated our cylinders into their own group, as well as the boxes are also in their own group. So. In our scene hierarchy, we have our floor and then our cylinder group with the cylinders under that and the box group with the boxes under that. And that'll be an important point later, but we'll get to that then. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to define our ray caster. So I'll define a new constant here. This will be of type three ray caster. So we'll talk about how we're gonna set this up in just a minute. And then the other thing that we need is to set up our mouse event handler. So when I click the mouse down, I want to trigger our intersection event. So wherever those mouse coordinates are, I wanna select an object at that point. So let's add a new event listener. We'll listen to mouse down, then let's create a function, our event handler. So we'll call this on mouse down, and then we'll create a function here. So very quickly, let's just log here, mouse was clicked. Make sure that's working. So I can click anywhere within the scene and we can see it's printing to the console here that the mouse was clicked. So in order to use our Raycaster, there's two different steps that we need to do. First, we need to kind of initialize the Raycaster based on where the mouse was clicked on the screen. And then we need to call the intersect objects function on our Raycaster. Now we'll return a list of intersections if any were found. So for Raycaster, we initialize it by calling set from camera. And here you can see we need to pass in the coordinates. So this is the 2D coordinates of the mouse in normalized device coordinates. Those should range between negative one and one in the X and Y axes. And then we need to pass in the camera. So we don't have these mouse coordinates yet in this coordinate frame, so we need to calculate those. Um, but we'll just call them chords for now. And then we'll pass in our camera. So let's go ahead and define those mouse coordinates. That's gonna be a vector two. So to calculate these, we'll take the client X on our mouse event here. This is basically the X position on the screen where we clicked. And then we need to divide that by the width of our canvas. So I'll get the DOM element associated with our renderer. Then I'll get the client width of that. This is asking for coordinates between negative one and one. So this client X ranges from zero to the width of the screen. So if we're dividing by the width here, that's gonna range from zero to one. So we need to multiply this by two to get it between zero and two, then subtract one to get it between negative one and one. And we'll do the same thing for the 
y axis to client y divided by the client height. And then one little nuance here is we need to negate this. So now that we have our mouse coordinates in normalized device coordinates, we can go ahead and call intersect objects on a raycaster. So the first argument for this function is the objects that we want to intersect against. So we'll pass in the children of our scene. And then the next argument here is whether or not we want to recursively check all descendants of the objects that we pass in. And we want that, so we'll set that to true. So if intersections.length is greater than zero, this is returning an array. So we're just checking to see if any intersections were found. Then let's just log the intersections array to the console. So I save that, and now if I start clicking, I can click on the floor here. You can see that it's returning an intersection here. Let's take a quick look at what it's returning. So it's returning the, the distance from the camera to the intersected object. It's returning the face of that object, the, the normal of that collision point, the object it collided with, the collision point. So you get all kinds of really useful information here. So all that we're gonna be using is this object here. So we're going to get back the object that we clicked on, and then we're going to change the color of its material. But I can click, let's say I'll click on this box here, and you can see it returned two elements in the array. And that's because it both collided with the box first, and then the ray just keeps going and collides with the floor behind it. So I can click on this point where these boxes overlap, and this should return three. Because we're colliding with this block, we're colliding with the block behind it, and the floor behind that. So these objects are returned sorted by distance with the closest first. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. So generally, we always want to intersect with the closest thing first, but sometimes you might not want that. So now I want to change the color of the object I selected. Let's create a new constant. Selected object is equal to intersections 0. And then I want to get the object associated with that intersection. Now I want to set it to a random color, so let's do a new three color, and we'll do RGB arguments here. So this will just be math.random for each of these, because the RGB values range between zero and one. Then on our selected object, let's get the material, and we'll set the color equal to that random color. Then finally, I want to print the name of the object that we selected to the console. And in my scene setup code here, I'm already passing in the names of these objects. So I'm setting the name property on the mesh here. So now I should be able to click on any object here and we can see I'm setting these colors and we're getting a printout on the console that the object was clicked. Now I mentioned before that we might not want the user to interact with all of the objects in our 3D scene. So I'll show you two different methods for controlling uh, which objects are selectable. In my scene setup code here, I split the cylinders into their own group and the boxes are in their own group. So I think this is the easiest method to go with is to break your scene into a hierarchy of objects. And you can use three dot group to facilitate that. Let's say all I want to have selectable is the boxes here. So instead of passing scene.children into intersect objects, I can just do boxes.children. Now I can click on the floor here, I can click on the cylinders, nothing's happening. But if I click on these boxes, you can see that the selection works. And that's the easiest approach. The other approach is using layers. So let's change this back to scene.children. And then in our raycaster, there's a layers property. So I want to set this to one. Now all objects by default are in the zero layer. So that's the layer that the camera is using. So I'll set our raycaster to only select objects in layer one. So I'm gonna modify our helper function here that we're using to create our meshes. So let's pass in the layer. And then on our mesh, we have a layers property and we'll set the layer to the layer that we're passing in. Now let's say that I only want cylinder A and box A to be selectable. So I'm gonna pass in a layer of one because that's what we have our raycaster set to. And then everything else will be a layer of zero. Now, when I save this, you can see that box A and cylinder A are no longer being rendered. And that's because our camera is only rendering layer one. 
let's go to our camera. So camera layers. So I don't want to set, I want to enable layer one. Now I don't want to set layer one because that removes membership from the other layers. So I'm just going to enable layer one in addition to the default layer zero. So if I say that, say that, we can see that box A and cylinder A come back. Now if I click on our scene and I'm clicking on everything that is not box A or cylinder A, you can see that nothing's happening. But if I click on box A, you can see box A was clicked and cylinder A was clicked, but I can't click on anything else. So those are the two different ways of controlling which objects your Raycaster can intersect with. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this helpful and you can now add object selection and user interaction into your 3JS projects. So if you like this, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notified of other 3JS tutorials I'm putting out. If there's other tutorials you'd like to see, please be sure to let me know in the comments which tutorials you want me to cover. So until next time, take care everyone. Thanks for watching.